All right, so first video here today is going to be I got some people that are kind of requested to show how you can TIG weld a saw blade. And by saw blade, typically we're talking about a band saw blade, which I've got a kind of used one. This is a high carbon one, and it's the one that excuse me, the one that came with my Harbor Freight bandsaw, a horizontal bandsaw. And so it's clearly outlived its usefulness as far as cutting, so now we're gonna use it for a demonstration in welding up. It's a, it's a high carbon saw, it's not a bimetal saw. So I would pretty much recommend the same for a bimetal saw because they're typically high carb. Bimetal just means it's that the teeth are a tool of steel and typically an M2 or something and then the uh, actual spine of it which is more or less the entire top seven eighths or so you can actually if you look at the bimetal saw you can see where the weld is and the different metal and that's typically another high carbon steel like a 1095 so what I'm going to do is I just show that this is a hacksaw blade and it's outlived its usefulness as well and so I'm going to cut this and then give it a good old weld and we'll see where it goes from there so I kind of want to do a little background and see if I can't draw a picture in your head because well, whatever uh, <laughs> most vertical band saws is where you see people welding the blades and that's just because like you'll have a part on this table and you'll have a hole drilled in the part and you want to cut out a, a inside design on it and uh, so you'll you'll cut the blade feed it through that hole in the part and then a lot of them have like a little blade welder on the side and uh, what the blade welder does is it's a form of resistance welding and it's you'll I mean you it's got a little grinding set up so that you can grind it you can clean it and then you clamp it in these clamps that will flow current through them and you leave it not just barely not touching so that there is a gap there so that the electricity has resistance and that resistance heats up the blade enough and then once it's heated up you there's some levers that lets you move these jaws close and it upsets the metal and it, it welds it together. And then once you do that, you still leave it in those clamps and you can, uh, you'll do like a temper pass and that's just, you'll apply a little bit of current to it. Not, you're not, you do not want to remelt it by no means, just a little bit of current, a little bit of current, you know, one or two times to help temper it down so that it's not nearly as brittle it will still have some flex in it and but yet still remain hard enough and really you just want the spine to hold its strength you there's no hope for that tooth if you welded one of the teeth on the blade there's no hope for that but uh, then you'll know, just kind of grind the flash off smooth with the blade so when TIG welding uh, Clearly you need to add filler metal. If you don't add filler metal, it's just going to be really, there's no reinforcement and it's going to be a weak spot. So what kind of filler metal is high carbon steel, you know, or if you're doing a bi, I mean bimetal, still high carbon steel for the most part. And so the answer there is, I'm going to use just some 309 stainless steel. And just a little bit of chemical background is that this high speed, or this, uh, I'm sorry, high carbon 1095 steel is, uh, the, the 95 designates that it's pretty much nominal around 0.95% carbon, and it kind of had very little other trace elements in there. And the deal with it is that it's got very, very low elongation percent. So if you were to pull it, it would barely even look like it moved before it broke. 
And then with the stainless steel, the 309, it's way over alloyed for it'll give you a strength like 1095 annealed is 140,000 tensile, I believe, PSI. And the 309 stainless is only 90,000. So where do you get the benefit is that its elongation is 40%. So it, it'll be very flexible because when you weld this thing, it's gonna become kind of brittle. It's not gonna to wanna to flex. So you're gonna to have to go back over with the temper again. But your chances are when the two outside pieces that don't stretch very much, when they cool down, they're gonna shrink back away and they're gonna pull away at that weld. So if you had a really, really, like no ductility in your weld metal, then it would pull and it would create so much force that it would just crack that weld. So that's why we use the stainless anyways, is that when these pull away, that stainless is gonna be like, you can have me, you know? It's a, no, no problem, I'll stretch. And so, I'm sure metallurgically I'm breaking all the terms, just so you know. But anyways, that's what we got. So I'm gonna do one on this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do one on this. And uh, I think I can show you. Let's see if it shows up worth. That is actually the factory grind on the where they welded this blade together. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, no go there. But, so, I mean, in the factory they do that. And what, guess what I'm doing is, if you can't get the right length blade, but you have, I mean, you can, lots of places sell just coils by 100 feet of this stuff. And so you just, you get your own coil and you can weld up your own size blades. Especially if you have a really off the wall, um, goofy size or who knows maybe you made your own bandsaw and so you need you need a custom blade you know all right so there we go got it cut we're just gonna pretend it broke I need to weld it back together so let's see if you can see my setup right here. I've kind of just got a plate here that is. I've got a plate right here that is square. That's and that's all I'm using it for is just a square edge basically. And I clamped it down to that towards the edge of the table. And so then I can slide these two blade the blades up against it, and then use that as my gauge more or less. And I mean, I, you can clamp it somewhat close to your weld joints, whatever you can get away with really as far as uh, being close to your joint and still having, I just caught my dog eating something, he probably shouldn't be. But clamp it down and still get access with your TIG torch there anyways, so. So then I'll go ahead and clamp this side down and. And as far as like a gap, I mean, you kind of want, it's really thin metal, so you don't need a huge gap. That's for, I mean, if maybe a hair size gap, you know, and uh, then at this point, I just kind of like to move this away so that I can get the full weld right here on there. And uh, I guess for this setup, I've got uh, 
using a number seven cup. It's got a 16th inch gas lens, uh, 16th inch tungsten, ground to a point. Uh, my tungsten would be 2% thoriated, I'm sure, and then again, just I got some 16th inch 309. If, I mean, if you get 16th inch 309 is too big for this job, really. If you had something else smaller than that, say O O35, that would probably be a good place to go as far as that's concerned, but. Uh, Didn't have it, so. So, all right, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a beat down this real quick. I've got a foot pedal, but I've also got my machine is only set to 40 amps, so nothing, you don't need a whole lot. <laughs> 